Hey, 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 how's it going, do it yourselfers? Welcome to the Jaguar project. So as I've mentioned before in my previous videos, this is a 1984 Jaguar XJ6. I got this car not too long ago at an auction. We're gonna see what's wrong with it. We're gonna fix all the problems that are wrong with it and then sell it and hopefully make a little bit of profit. Now, if you're not familiar with these Jaguar XJ6s and you're interested in finding out more about them, I've already done an introduction video about this specific car. You know, when I bought it from the auction, I brought it in, you know, we went over all the the specs of the engine, transmission. So I'll put that video in a playlist that will include this video and all the subsequent videos that will be about, you know, fixing all the issues that are gonna be wrong with this car. But as far as this video is concerned, this video is going to be about the mechanical inspection of this car. First, we're gonna start the car, you know, go over the engine bay, see how things look, see if we can find out anything that's wrong there. Then from there, we'll put the car on the lift, we'll raise it up, we'll inspect the, the suspension parts, the drivetrain parts, see if there's any leaks that we can see and go from there. All right, so first we're gonna open our hood. Now we'll connect our jumper because as is the case for nearly all auction vehicles, this car also has a dead battery. All right, so before we start the car, we'll actually do a quick inspection of the accessories on the interior. Obviously, the driver's side window works. The rear side kind of works too, although a bit slowly. Front passenger side doesn't, and the rear passenger side doesn't either. Moonroof works though, that's cool. All right, let's check out our headlights. We got one of them and our high beam. Yep, they both work. Our left signal, right signal. Here's the left side and here's the right side. And here's our brake lights. All right, let's start her up. All right, now I don't know how well you guys can hear this engine, but it's running pretty good. I mean, it could run smoother. We'll probably inspect and replace the spot plugs on this engine, just to be on the safe side, but overall, it's, uh, it's running pretty nice. Now, as far as anything standing out on the engine, you know, I left this car under a tree for a few days, about a week, and as you can see, the rodents got in here and they left behind some goodies. Also, some of these wires, like this, they have a loss of protection. I don't know if the rodents chewed through them, or they were missing from the get-go, but this one is laying on top of a coolant passage, so that's not gonna be good. It's already getting hot, so we're gonna turn the car off, but we're gonna take care of that and any other exposed wires uh, before we sell this car. Now it goes without saying, before you start a car that you just bought from an auction for the first time, uh, you wanna make sure there's oil and coolant in the engine. I've obviously done this, I've also test-driven this car to make sure it doesn't overheat and there's nothing wrong with the transmission. All right, so next we'll raise the car and inspect the suspension and the drivetrain from the bottom. All right, so let's check the tie rods and the ball joint on the left front wheel. This one's okay. Here's the left rear. This is okay as well. Here's the right front. No play there. No play there. This one's okay too. All right, so first we'll inspect the suspension components. Here's the driver's side front wheel. As you may be able to tell, the boot on our upper body joint is torn, but it doesn't have any play in it, so we're not gonna fix that. The boot on the lower ball joint Looks to be okay. Now our spring here has seen better days. And if this was my car, I would look into replacing it. But you know, this is in, still in working condition. We're not gonna bother with that. All right, so let's go check out the front passenger side. More or less the same story. Torn boot on the upper ball joint. The spring on this side is also a little bit rusty, but better shape than the driver's side. All right, now let's go in from the driver's side and show you a couple of oil leaks. First up, we got an oil leak from our transmission oil pan. Here you can see it better from this angle. As you can see, this transmission oil pan uses a gasket, but they've also, it looks like they have RTV on both sides of the gasket. Either way, it's leaking, so we're gonna replace that. Now a little bit further up, towards the front of the car, there is some evidence of leaks on our engine oil pan as well. However, this here, this is coolant, so we're leaking some coolant from somewhere up top on this side. Further up here, this is engine oil. Now, the engine oil gasket area itself looks oily, but I'm not sure if the leak is coming from there. So right there, that's where the engine oil pan meets with the bottom of the engine, right in this area. Now there's, oil, there's leaks from there, but the, there's also oily from further up top. Now looking around, it looks like uh, there's our engine oil cooler lines that are also leaking. So I don't know if the leak is coming from there, or somewhere from the engine oil pan, but we'll inspect this further and make sure 
to replace the right component. Oh yeah, looking at the engine cooler lines right above the oil filter, you can see it leaking right there. So that's probably needs to be replaced. Also, I think I see where our coolant leak is coming from. It's coming from up top. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a rusty old uh, clamp holding a coolant hose in that seems to be leaking. Now, one common problem with these uh, XJ6s is that they develop uh, cracks on their exhaust pipes. Uh, this is on the driver's side, obviously, and as you can see, there's our exhaust pipe right there, and it looks like they've welded it. This one probably cracked and they welded it and repaired it. And so, and I do not hear an exhaust leak, so that's good. All right, just to do a quick tally here, we got a transmission oil pan gasket. We got engine oil cooler lines. As far as the engine oil pan gasket is concerned, I'm not 100% sold that it's leaking. I think it's coming from further up top. Maybe valve cover gaskets and whatnot. And of course, there's that coolant leak that we're gonna to have to take care of as well. All right, next, let's go take a look at the rear as well. So here's the right rear side. I don't see much wrong with these. There's your disc brakes, by the way, right by the differential. I do see a small leak right by our differential drain plug. And here's the left rear side. Again, I don't see anything wrong right off the bat either. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this leak is coming from the plug and not the differential cover. So we might just replace that plug, replace the fluid while we add it. Our U-joint looks okay. Everything else looks in pretty decent shape. No evidence of rust, or I should say heavy rust. There's just some surface rust, but this is a 1984 vehicle. You're bound to have some surface rust back here. Also, all the tires are in okay condition. We do not need to replace any of these. They're all matching Michelin tires as well. All right, so, so far it doesn't look like we need to do anything too crazy to this car. Now, let me lower it and show you where the coolant leak is coming from as well. There we are on the passenger side looking in, our coolant leak is coming from that rusty old clamp holding it in, holding in this hose in the same location where these wires are. So when we go to take care of these wires, we're gonna take care of that coolant leak as well. So yeah, it looks like we got a decent deal on this car. Nothing too crazy that we'll need to do to this to get ready to, to be sold. Uh, it does have high miles on it, again, 189,000 miles, so I don't know how much we can get for it, but I'm hoping, you know, anywhere from five to $6,000, considering how good of a shape the exterior of this is. It's a little dirty right now, but once this is detailed, and also the interior, all the leather seats are in good condition. Also, I forgot to mention, the AC on this thing works pretty good as well, so that's a plus and should help get the money that we'll need to get for this car. So yeah, if you're interested in seeing all the repairs that we just talked about, on this car. Make sure you subscribe to the playlist that this video will be a part of. Also, obviously, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Also, if you want to see my other videos, I'll put some links to some on this side of the screen that you may like. Also, links in the suggestion box and description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.